Hello, everyone. Welcome to TSAM Digital. I'm Anna Luisa, and today I'm joined by Tom McHugh from Finborn Technologies. Hello, Tom. Hey, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Welcome. Um, so, Tom, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, your work, and the company? Sure. So, um, I've been at Finborn since we started five years ago. Um, I'm currently the CEO, but I started out life here as the CTO. Um, in terms of what we do as a company, we are formed to structurally change the cost of investing for everyone, which is a bit of a mouthful. But what that means is we are about bringing efficiency to capital markets and specifically asset managers. Brilliant. Thank you, Tom, for that wonderful introduction. And Tom, I was wondering um, if you could tell us a little bit about what are the sort of biggest pain points for asset managers when it comes to investment data today? Sure. So um, life and asset management is a bit of a perfect storm at the minute. Uh, there's constant pressure in terms of, you know, increased regulation, fee pressures, and you can see there's a lot of M&A happening in the market and a huge amount of competition. Now, when it comes to data, that creates a lot of problems for people. It creates an increase in the ESG data required, which is very topical at the minute. You know, there's increased regulation like SFDR. There's obviously, we're just out the back of MIFID too. And what happens is that, People look at that as, you know, very large strategic data programs. When we talk to people, we like to see that as more of an incremental change, and we like to help them build systems so that it becomes less of a big bang and much more, as I said, incremental. Absolutely. And, and sort of on the back of that perfect storm, I'm, I'm just wondering how significant a role does legacy and closed systems play in creating data difficulties? So it's a bit of a complex question to be honest um you've got a lot of systems that people have been using for a very long time and the data in them has huge amounts of value and it's not that we would advocate that people have a strategy where they throw that data away we think that actually if you can harness the power of the data in those systems and make it available to people to use in a more efficient basis you can actually deliver a lot of alpha you didn't even realize that you had that does push you down a bit of a platform strategy and pushes you into a scenario where you need to consider how you interoperate with the systems you have and move to a place where there's more of a citizen developer and a citizen data owner, as it were. Um, in terms of how we see that actually impacting clients, it tends to be right now people look at the world as in, you know, I've got legacy, I want to move to the nirvana of a single source of the truth and golden data stores. The reality is somewhat different where incremental change, as I said, is a much better way to go. Absolutely. And it seems like asset managers are grappling with a lot of change of the obstacles that stand in the way of operational change. What would you say is the most prominent? Um, it comes down to people and and their appetite for risk, really. So if you look at the world where uh, you need to make a change and um, you've basically created an infrastructure where change is difficult or expensive, there's the old adage, right? The best way for a CEO to get fired is to make a, a huge amount of, of change all at once and, and sort of end up in a scenario where the operations actually don't work the way you wanted them to. It goes back to this thing I've been saying now in, in the last two questions, which is you want to get yourself to a scenario where you can manage data model changes and infrastructure changes in a very incremental fashion. Um, we talk to clients a huge amount about how creating large operational changes and large operational change programs brings with it a huge human cost, right? So people have been living with using the systems they have are using now for a very long time. They're also somewhat not just afraid of the change that's coming down the line, but unsure of what it means in terms of the impact. You look at this in terms of how people approach UAT cycles and sign off cycles. Our view is that if you can generate a platform where you can make a lot of those changes very incrementally and as close to production as you can, you'll be much more efficient. It sounds really fascinating. Um, so I'm wondering, how can Finborn help firms to digitally transform and unlock the value of their data? So to some extent, there's nothing new in this. Um, we as a technology company, I said at the start, are very interested in efficiency. And that efficiency comes with um, 
an entire set of technical capability and industry know-how to to bring you to that point where you can actually make small incremental changes and do it in production almost. And what that means is you need to have the right sort of entitlement system. You need to have the right data model, but one that's flexible enough to add on your own business processes. And you need to be able to interoperate very efficiently with the existing systems that people are using. So, you know, we've built a ground up role-based access control system. We've built a platform that's API first. We've built a whole raft of integrations into well-known existing vendors, but all of it is about making you more empowered to make that change in production and making you um, have the controls that you need to operate safely because lots of people will tell you they can change things but very few will will be able to actually back it up in a way where you can run the old and the new side by side in one system and deliver that change incrementally absolutely and, and tom um how should asset managers evaluate the success of their data management programs so I like to think of this as very close to how people should think about Agile, right? Um, the ultimate sort of value judgment is to the business, right? What are you helping that business do, right? Are you helping them generate alpha? Are you helping them to be operationally efficient? Are you helping them to, you know, make better decisions somewhere? What, what's the purpose of it and what's the value, right? It's not just about bringing in lots and lots of data. It's how do people get information out of that data that is, is, is the most important part of it. The second thing is governance of it, right? There's an awful lot of people who, an awful lot of systems out there that help you get more data, but you need to be able to know who's using it when you bring that data into the building. And you need to be able to make sure that the people are licensed to use it, entitled to use it, and making good decisions off the back of it. And then you've got to concentrate on the people and the process side of it. So you have to look at the education, right? If you bring in 15 different yield calculations, are you sure that people know what those numbers mean? Are you sure that when you have brought in the, the, the data and you've brought in you know, the, the owners to it and you've brought in the sign-off cycle to it and you've brought in the governance to it, that people just don't drown in too much information as it were? Mm 